I'm taking this puppy live long before I'm ready to actually do so. I haven't even put in my headset yet. There we go. Got the earbuds in. Just cruising into a mock. You know, I was trying to do, and this is where my typical plan backfires. I was trying to do a 14 teamer. Um, and it just, it didn't fill up. So, um, womp womp. So I dropped into a 10 instead. We'll get just a different look today. Um, I'm going to be very frustrated if some of these teams aren't actually showing, considering I was like well, one of the last ones to join, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, the reason to do a different size mock and... Uh, we might make this one shorter, depending. We, we'll, we'll go different depths on the mock, depending on uh, how many people are actually here for it live. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm Dan Vesperus. Uh, please do like and subscribe. There's at Dan Vesperus on Twitter. Um, hit the thumbs up button. That actually does help us quite a bit. And there's many hundreds of you that watch these things, and only a handful of you actually hit the thumbs up. So please, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube page. We've got all these things going. We got football mocks going right now. We got basketball mocks here in the early going. Come check out my podcast over Fantasy NBA Today. That's on regular podcast channels. Quick uh, preview here. Um, looks like there might be a couple of auto drafts. It is what it is. We'll deal with it. The fewer, the more of those there are, the shorter we're going to go because we want to learn where people are going. And with autos, you always have one guy in your real draft that's like kind of accidentally autoing or basically following the boards. That's not a big deal. But the reason I do it this way instead of as somebody left the damn thing. And the reason I do it this way is that I want to see what the general public is doing. I got the question asked of me. I think I may have talked about it a little bit on uh, the last mock. Why don't you have... You know, a 12 people you trust just do a mock with you. Well, it's because I don't care what they're doing. I want to know what regular folk are doing because the people that I get in leagues with, Yahoo Pro Leagues, whatever they call them these days, they're not going to all be following me. I have the third pick. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna take... I'm going to take Steph just to see where everybody else is going here at the top of the board. This dude will get auto-drafted Luca. My goal here is to see generally what the world is doing with their picks in this moment. So that's why we're doing a couple of these a week. Not every single day. It's just too, that's overkill. In fact, what we're doing right now is probably overkill, but it seems like people are enjoying just having these like 15, 20 minute blip shows. These are short, short mocks. At some point, we'll probably do a longer one. Let me uh, make the board bigger so you guys can see what's going on. Um... For now, though, we're just kind of screwing around. This is a 10-teamer instead of 12. It was uh, requested that I do a 14. At some point, I'll try to get one of those going. If that doesn't work in Yahoo in the, in the regular way, then maybe we'll do one over on Fantrax. I'm not as interested in the result, but at least you can get a better idea of... Um, basically, I think for most people, it's what kind of guys are going to be on the board for me at each juncture. And certainly for the first three, maybe four rounds... That's more of an issue because you expand a league, it's a different player pool. You shrink a league, it's a different player pool for you at each pick. So here, uh, I had third pick. I took Steph just because he was one of the guys that wasn't that interested to see where he was going. I'm obviously going to have a different player or player's options at my fingertips coming back in the second round with pick 18 as opposed to you know, a 12-team league where you have pick 22 in that spot. So top seven is the same as usual. Shea ended up last. That's despite some autos in there. And that's kind of the way things have been going. He's been dropping to the back end of that. He's he's down there with Steph. Those two guys have been kind of flip-flopping at six and seven. The rest of it's been pretty consistent lately. Jokic is going first. Embiid is generally going second. Luka's generally going third. Either Tatum or Halliburton is going the next two. And then Shea and Steph tend to be the two after that. So Dame got autoed at 8. I would have been interested in that one, but then I'm not. Anthony Davis at 9. Giannis at 10. I was a little surprised Giannis didn't go at 9. He tends to go kind of in the early going there. JJJ at 11. Um, that player, I think, is going to be doing fine on big man stats out of the shoot. Giannis has an ADP around 10, but we've seen him go as early as 4 in some of our mock drafts. He tends to go around that 8 slot with Dame. 
because people, when they get to that spot, they're like, look, I'm just going to take Giannis and I'm going to punt because he's a really easy stat set guy to build a punt team around. Uh, we're back into autos again. After this one, I think these guys are going to get autoed really fast, which means we're going to have to talk quicker. Kevin Durant sliding to 12. That's about the latest we've seen him go in any of our mock drafts. And then LaMelo uh, autoed at 13. Also kind of the latest we've seen him go. Uh, Kyrie is going to get autoed off the board here, which is, I guess, a shame because I'd love to know if a real human would take Kyrie at this spot. One thing that I will note here in the early going is that with or without auto... Kyrie is one of the early pre-ranked guys who seems to be going later than his pre-rank. He's pre-ranked 12. His ADP is 15.3. So he's a guy that people are avoiding. There's, I think, a fear around him that he's just going to take days off. But if you look at most of the guys that have been drafted so far, not many of them are playing every ball game. Anthony Edwards at 15, uh, pretty reliably going in this pocket of players. Donovan Mitchell jumps over Devin Booker. I'm a little surprised, actually, we haven't seen more of that. I'm pretty low on Booker this year. I know that um, he's going to be doing more playmaking. I just don't think it's going to be nearly enough. And honestly, without being a butthead about it, because I don't want people to get up in my business, is there goes Devin Booker. Now it's my turn. So, you know, your second round pick in a 10 teamer, you have better choices. I'm going to take Kawhi because he's a guy, again, I don't care where he ends up going. I know he's later than his spot. Um, then Freddie Van Vliet got autoed after me. But let's see what happens here with the rest of these. Because now you got two real person picks in a row before another auto. Um, on the Booker front, I don't, want to, I don't want to turn the Devin Booker fans against me. So I have to be somewhat careful with my words. By the way, the uh, the player on the, the secondary turn there went Mikhail Bridges at 20, James Harden at 21. Sabonis gets autoed at 22. I'll go old man style here. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll soak up my whole 30 seconds so I can talk to you guys about what's going on. I just, I you know, I don't think Devin Booker is that great of a passer. I've watched a lot of Phoenix basketball because you guys know I'm a little bit of a Chris Paul of file. For the last few years, I've watched that team. Booker's passes are just... A fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second too slow for him to be a truly elite point guard style playmaker. Is he going to get people open because of how good he is at creating and making his own shot? Yes. That's like the just de facto assists you get by being really, really good offensively. So is that enough compliments for those that are going to get in my throat on the Devin Booker thing? He's not as good a passer as people make it out to be. He's fine. By being really good at basketball and being a fine passer, he's going to tumble into some assists. I think he was at like five and a half last year or something, and that'll probably go up. My guess would be six and a half, maybe seven, but I'm hearing double digit? I don't see it. Anyway, what was, what's been going on here while I've been yammering about Devin Booker stuff? Uh, Desmond Bain went 24. I think that might have been an auto. Markin in 25, pretty reliably there. Trey Young, 26. That's also a very reliable one. Uh, Paul George, LeBron, 27, 28, Cat, 29, DeJounte Murray, De'Aaron Fox, 30 and 31. Pretty early on those guys, actually, earlier than we usually see them go. And you got a few, a couple of autos here. Um, I think we might be losing people in this draft, so we're not going to go too much farther. I might peel through the end of this round and just talk a little bit about the early names. Because at this point, once you get the autos going at this rate, uh, you're not learning anything. I think we learned something the first two rounds. I think that might be about as far as we go on this, so I'm not going to waste your guys' time. Um, it's my turn, uh, but one, two, three, four, five teams are auto-drafting now, so no longer is this viable information because guys are going to get autoed and pushed closer to their pre-rank, even if they don't really... And it's well, big man, Dan, right? Because it's almost like I'm autoing my team. But I'm actually picking a team specifically based on the players that I'm not that interested in where they go. Because I already feel like I kind of know. So anyway, um, I've been put into auto-pick mode now. I'm going to close this window so you guys can just see my face. And we'll talk a little bit about the couple of things we learned in this one. Not a great mock draft. I know in the comments you guys are going to be like, Dan, this is why you get real people in it. It doesn't usually go quite this terribly. Usually there's like two autos. And that's, I think, honestly, parallels a little bit what you sometimes see in these Yahoo Pro Leagues or even in your kind of like your friend leagues. 
uh, where it's like, oh, no, uh, you know, Jeremy's out of town on a business trip, so he set his pre-ranked team, but he can't actually be in the room. So you usually have someone who's kind of semi-autoing or maybe even all the way autoing in your league. That's fairly accurate. I don't want the diehards. I don't want what they're doing right now. But I'll admit, I'll admit, this one was worse than usual. Sorry, but we can still talk about basketball here because, you know, we we saw the front end of things. Um, we're seeing a pretty consistent Kyrie drop in the early going. Um, we've seen the top really solidify that first three, Jokic, Embiid, Doncic, going off the board one, two, three in almost every league right now. Tatum Halliburton is a pair. Shea and Steph is a pair. And then you get into that what the hell to do at eight thing. Now, Dame got autoed at eight in this one, but you often see Giannis there. There hasn't been a, a, a pure consensus on what happens after that. Dame, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis tend to be kind of towards the front end of that group. LaMelo is kind of like pushing towards the front end. So is JJJ. Those two guys, I think, are in that next group. And then you have like the Kyrie or Anthony Edwards. Sometimes I guess Ant might get pushed up, but the Kyrie Ant. And then Booker seems like he's sort of fallen towards the back end of that that next pack. Um, the group after that was kind of hard to decipher for us on this one. Donovan Mitchell got pushed up the board. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue, especially if Yahoo adjusts his pre-rank a little bit. Uh, quick question here before we wrap up our very fast mock. What's your favorite spot to draft so far this cycle? Mine is probably 8 or 12. That's funny, Apollo. I'm actually very much not in that group. I don't like having the um that choice at the end of the first round uh i i personally think Jokic or Embiid or Halliburton i think these guys frankly i think Shea is being undervalued i, I think there's an ex expectation of a huge drop off that doesn't really happen i know a lot of his value is tied up in a in a big jump in free throws and so if that doesn't stick then maybe you see him tumble back towards the pack a little bit but he was actually out in front of a lot of these guys last year so even if he has erosion he can still hang with a lot of these dudes Steph it's mostly an age thing for me but then like once you get through that what do you like Dame you can't do anything with right now until you know where he's at Kevin Durant Anthony Davis are obviously the upshot guys in that next group and if you go that route you might feel really good about your team today because then you get a relatively early second round pick coming back. If you had like pick nine and you ended up with Anthony Davis, 10, 11, 12, 13 point 15, you have pick 16 coming back. I mean, you might end up with uh, one of the guys from that same grouping. You might have Kyrie fall to you. You might do a little, a little baby reach for a Donovan Mitchell or something like that. So it might feel great as you're looking at it. But for me, Apollo, I don't like those spots because on day one, Anthony Davis is healthy, but by day six, he might not be. I would much prefer to have one of those true assault monsters up at the top of the first round. So for me, number one, number one is my favorite spot this year. And if you drop me back of number one, I'm pretty good with slot four or five. Um, Because I think the guys towards the end of the second round are still pretty damn good. Like you might be able to get... Uh, Kawhi might fall there, and a Roto would be an interesting grab. Head to head, you could do Trey if you were building a team around uh, assists. Like if you had Jokic at the front end, you could go Jokic Trey, and you could think about maybe punting a defensive stat of some kind. Um, Jimmy Butler, who probably has some drop off if Dame comes to town, but that dude is a top ten guy. Before that, I just like Donovan Mitchell. Some, probably has a little bit of an edge among these second round guys and then like Anthony Edwards if you're early enough to get him probably has a little bit of an edge from the durability standpoint same for Mikhail Bridges but I don't think that there's a sure bet across that like past the first pick or two of the second round I don't think there's a sure bet in there so I'd rather have the first pick give me Jokic just build me that sturdy foundation right out of the shoot and then I don't have to worry as much about what the hell I'm getting from that point on so give me number one, or give me like that Tatum-Halliburton duo. Those guys, I think, are going to play a lot of games this year, and they're going to have pretty good numbers doing it. Probably prefer Halliburton between those two, by the way. Stat set. You don't get as many points. I get that. But you can go points second round. 
And I just think that Halliburton's going to have a better per game set this year than uh, than Jason Tate. I mean, he beat him by just a little bit last year also. So uh, this mock, not the best. I'll give that to you guys. Um, usually I tell a dirty joke if the mock is going poorly. Um, I'm trying to think of like ones that... Uh, I think of jokes that my family's like told around dinner tables in the past. <laughs> oh man, there's a really good one that involves uh do, 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 do. like the invisible woman. Oh, I can't remember that one. That's a shame. I'll try to come up with the next time. Brian, what's up, dude? Started watching two years ago. You did a bucket breakdown of tiers of players last year. I don't believe you did it. Was running that is something you would ever do again. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of doing it on the over on fantasy NBA today right now without like truly doing it, if that makes sense. Um, uh, because we've gone through basically like the first 17 names and kind of tiered bucketed them out. Um, you know, just like we talked about here, Jokic bucket one, Embiid bucket two, Doncic three, Tatum Halliburton seemed to be bucket four. What I'd like to do when we get through a lot of these names is I'll I'll kind of work with all of you guys on on over on the main podcast in rearranging them based on because the bucketing not only do you take them in the order they're going and look at it from that standpoint you look at that then from where would you want to take it so an example of that is if you are say really high on Anthony Davis it's hypothetical. Not saying we are, but if you were, he's falling into a bucket right now with guys like Dame, Kevin Durant, Giannis, um, maybe LaMelo, maybe Kyrie. Okay, so that's the bucket. But what if you're really high on him? You have to figure out where you want to move on a guy like that. So that's where you make little tweaks to your bucket. You might move him one bucket earlier just to make sure that you get him before everybody else starts to take him. So there's all that little stuff that happens with the buckets. But right now, basically, over on Fantasy NBA Today, we're kind of breaking down almost every player in the early parts of drafts and sorting them into these chunks where they're getting drafted and where we would think about drafting them. But it's all game theory. It's all game theory. No dirty joke today. Short mock draft today because people left it after the first three rounds. Um, what did we learn? A couple of things. Uh, but we'll just keep putting that data in our Rolodex and we'll roll from there. Regular episode of Fantasy NBA Today coming in about a half an hour over on the regular channel. Please, again, take a moment to like and subscribe to this show, to our YouTube page. If you got some comments, you can hit me. I'm trying to check them here because things aren't that nutty for me yet this far out from the season. And uh, we'll be back. We'll do another mock on Monday. Hopefully more people are in it. And if they're not, I'll tell a dirty joke. So long for now, everybody.